Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to This Justin. Thank you for joining me today. In this video, we're going to go over QuantumScape, take a look and see if it's worth our investment. I also wanted to give you my thoughts and my QuantumScape stock price prediction for the end of 2021. So let's jump right in. All right, guys, before we get started today, subscribe to the channel for me, hit that little bell so you get notified every time I post. Uh, there's also a link down in the description to my Patreon account. Come over and join the family. We've got an amazing community. Uh, we're all constantly trying to help each other. You'll get access to the private Discord where we talk stocks. You'll get links to five portfolios so you can see exactly what I invest into. I also send out anytime I buy or sell a stock up to the second I do it so you can follow along with that. And then I send out high value swing trade setups anytime I map a chart or I've got a watch list. Uh, you know, really anything that can help us become better investors and grow our portfolios. So if that's something you're interested in, come over and check it out. I think you'll get a lot of value out of it, especially if you're a beginner, uh, because we've got a lot of education over there. We do portfolio reviews, a lot of great things. Uh, and then also you can help grow uh, the channel with us and be part of a beautiful family. So uh, day one squad, I love you guys so much. Thank you for your support. It means the world to me. Uh, but guys, let's get started. Today, I want to talk about QuantumScape, do a QuantumScape stock analysis, uh, take a look at the company, uh, as well as kind of look at the future so I can give you a QuantumScape stock price prediction for the end of 2021 and then years to come after that. Uh, guys, this is a very speculative company. Uh, for those of you guys that are that are new to the channel, we love EV stocks, uh, you know, Xpeng, Lightning E-Motors, NEO, Tesla, we love them all. Uh, but this is a battery manufacturing company. They are really trying to like revolutionize the electric battery, uh, you know, by making it with lithium metal instead of lithium ion. A very speculative, very, uh, you know, high growth, lot of, uh, you know, competition in the industry. They are pretty far away from production. Uh, we've talked about other stocks like this that haven't, you know, got anything out into the to the general public yet or the the market yet. Uh, they have made prototypes that have been used by, you know, big manufacturers. They are big, you know, backed by big companies. So there is potential here. We just want to figure out what the risk tolerance is and and where they could potentially go in the future. So uh, first thing we want to start looking at here is the website, guys. So this is their website. If you guys want to learn a little bit more about the company, you can come here. There's presentations, there's information. It's a lot of good information. First thing I wanted to look at, guys, so this is what I was saying. So solid state lithium metal, uh, it's the next generation battery. Uh, they they really are kind of wanting to take the EV you know battery industry and just totally turn it upside down because if they can get uh, this solid state you know uh, lithium metal battery, it can not only make it, you know, have more energy, uh, you know, more uh, dense so they can pack more power into the same size battery, uh, you know, safer, cheaper, longer range, all of these different benefits. Uh, you can kind of see here, these are lithium ions versus density to solid state lithium metal. Now, with that being said, these are some of the, uh, the benefits of that lithium metal battery. Like I said, more energy. So you're packing more power into the same size case. Uh, if they can do that, they will literally change the way that we manufacture electric vehicles. We all know how fast electric vehicles are growing, uh, you know, nationwide in the U.S. and China, all these areas. And so there's going to be a ton of competition with a lot of these, not only OEM electric vehicle companies, but also, uh, you know, other uh, electric vehicle companies like Tesla, NEO, Xpeng, you know, even Samsung and, and you know, Toyota and LG, you know, they're all going to be trying to do this because it's it's producing a much superior product for much cheaper uh, that offers a whole slew of benefits. Uh, now, the other thing is this fast charging. Enables 15 minute fast charge, zero to 80% by eliminating lithium diffusion, bottleneck and anode host material. Guys, that 15 minute mark is really like the key metric there. Uh, because studies have shown that typically when people stop at a gas station, it's under 15 minutes, right, to fill up their tank, uh, you know, go inside, use the restroom, get snacks, whatever it is. Uh, so that 15 minute mark is really like that tipping point where they have got to be under in order to, you know, kind of replace that gas station, pull up, fill up your gas tank and roll. Uh, so, so, you know, by this battery being able to do that, huge for the industry right there. Uh, the next thing is just increasing life cycles. So making the battery last for much longer, years and years and years and years. Uh, and then safety. 
uh, you know, making the, the, the battery, not only the production of the battery safer, uh, but also just the, the overall battery in the vehicle safer. So obviously we love safety, uh, you know, safety first. Uh, and then cost, guys. I mean, lowering the cost by upwards of like 17% is huge uh, for, for not only OEMs, but, uh, you know, other companies as well. And then the general public. So you're getting, you know, better product for, for cheaper. Obviously, you would want that. In order to achieve that, you need what's called a uh, solid state lithium separator. Uh, in order to, you know, get the materials necessarily to make these type of batteries. Now, guys, people have been trying to figure this out for 40 years, uh, and it's just escaped, uh, you know, everybody. But QuantumScape seems to think that they have found just that. There's a lot of different ways of making those solid state separators. Uh, QuantumScape is specifically using uh, ceramic, uh, which they feel is the, the best way to do it. I mean, guys, if they can do this, if they can successfully, uh, you know, produce a separator that works, it's efficient at scale. I mean, guys, they will be a leader in the industry. I mean, they are already kind of leading the charge within this industry. Uh, but to kind of give you an idea, th this industry is projected to do to be a $280 billion industry by 2027. Uh, so that is a massive total addressable market there. Uh, guys, the other thing is, is uh, you know, this, this task is no easy task. It is very challenging uh, to do so. So uh, that's why it makes this bet so speculative because there's so many things that can go wrong. It, it's a lot harder than just developing a electric vehicle like, you know, Ride or Fisker uh, that are just pre-production. This is something that we're in uncharted territory here. We're really trying to kind of figure out how to do it in general. Uh, you know, they have been able to uh, produce, you know, some performance tests. Uh, they've been able to produce results in not only single layer, but also multi-layer battery cell that pretty much had strong, uh, you know, energy density. It had temperatures that match, you know, uh, what is required for, uh, you know, automotive use. So they, they, they are getting there. They do have nice prototypes that are being used by Volkswagen. A uh, lot of, lot of cool stuff there. Uh, guys, the R and D cost when you're doing something like this though, is so high. Uh, you know, they're, they're pre-revenue. Uh, they're going to have a huge cash burn, but they are very well funded, which is which is important. Uh, these are kind of the the trade offs here, or the the benefits of what those batteries can do. This is what they have been able to do. So in system volumes, they've be able they've been able to cre uh, increase energy density by eighty one percent. Uh, increase system energy by 82%, range by 82%, uh, charge by 33%, and power by 55%. That's huge, guys. I mean, they are literally, uh, you know, almost doubling, uh, you know, what's currently out there on the market today. The next thing I wanted to talk about, guys, is their backing with Volkswagen. I mean, when you're in a speculative industry like this and you've got such a high cash burn, the, the best thing to have is a big backer like Volkswagen and Bill Gates. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is, like I was saying, they're well-funded right now. They have $1.6 billion uh, in current assets and uh, $1.3 billion after liabilities uh, you know, are, are, are factored in. Uh, looking at their operating uh, expenditures, uh, you know, it should be about $300 million a year, uh, including the interest on all of their liabilities, which gives them about four years uh, before the cash burn really becomes an issue. Now, with that being said, they are going to have to, you know, get production nailed down. They're going to have to get an effective process to be able to scale it uh, within those four years, or they're going to have to start doing cash raises uh, and things like that. But again, the the way I see this industry is, the cash burn could potentially actually be a good thing for QuantumScape versus a negative thing because this process is so hard and because it uh, you know costs so much to to do. It kind of creates a moat there. It's not just uh, you know as easy for any company to just jump right in and start doing it because of that cash burn. So it could potentially be uh, you know kind of a, a steel barrier for other companies to kind of come in and knock QuantumScape off. Uh, and then again, obviously they've got Volkswagen there if they do need to, you know, extend uh, that production just a little bit. Again, guys, this is a stock that if they can hit their their projected metrics, like if they can get to production, they can do all things right, the stock will kill it. It will absolutely kill it. But if they miss, even by a little, the stock could get killed. Uh, the, the real big risks here, guys, is manufacturing. 
Uh, as of right now, Volkswagen owns like 13% of the company. Uh, as you can see here, uh, Volkswagen, Volkswagen is the second largest automotive uh, company in the world. Uh, 11, mu 11 million vehicles were produced in full year 2019. Uh, 38 billion investment in electric mobility. Uh, they plan to launch 70 electric vehicle models and produce 22 million electric vehicles by 2029. So they're really going for it, guys. As you can see here, their partnership with QuantumScape, they committed $300 million to them. Uh, they've got strong relationships since 2012. Guys, QuantumScape has actually been in business for like the since 2010, so like 11 years. So they're not new by any means. They've been in the industry. They've been doing it. Uh, they've been trying to to get these uh, these these batteries out. Uh, now they did kind of you know do that joint venture with uh, with Volkswagen uh, because they need production. They need to be able to scale it. When I said that the main risks are manufacturing. Uh, what I mean by that, guys, is is the EV battery industry is expected to increase from 110 gigawatt hours in 2020 to 3,860 gigawatt hours by 2035. Uh, QuantumScape plans to produce about 20 per or 20 gigawatt hours, uh, but in the joint venture with Volkswagen, uh, that's only you know three percent of the 2025 forecasted amount, uh, but. Beautifully, Volkswagen plans on opening six 40 gigawatt factories by 2030, uh, making the total overall gigawatt hours that they will own uh, upwards of 240 gigawatt hours. So that will help them really take a bigger percentage of that overall manufacturing market. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention was Elon Musk, you know, has even talked about how hard manufacturing is, uh, you know, at scale in an industry like this. Uh, one thing that he was talking about is how there's just a constraint on battery cell output. And in order to really understand it, you have to have like done it. So we'll just have to kind of wait and see, you know, how the, how that manufacturing plays out. Uh, next thing I wanted to look at guys is the fundamentals, the financials. Uh, so as you can see here, like I said, pre-revenue. Uh, they do not. They do not plan to reach production uh, until about 2024, 2025. So as you guys can see here, in 2024, uh, they plan on doing around 14 million dollars in revenue. Uh, but look at this scale that they are planning to grow at once they start production in 2024: 39 million in 2025, 275 million in 2026. 3.2 billion in 2027 and 6.4 billion in 2028. Those are massive numbers there, guys. So when you're investing in a stock like this, you have to pretty much plan for the next four years, they're going to have zero revenue, poo-poo revenue. They're going to be losing a unbelievable amount of money. Uh, they do not even get EBITDA positive until 2027 and free cash flow uh, positive till 2027 as well. So you know, if they can hit production, guys, this is a stock that I see staying, uh, you know, in a range for, for quite some time, you know, and good news comes out, the, the stock pumps, bad news come out, the stock sells off. Uh, you know, look at Tesla. They didn't really do much for a long time, very speculative bet. And then all of a sudden caught on and they went to the moon. So you just have to kind of have a high risk tolerance for a stock like this. You have to do a lot of due diligence. You have to have a strong stomach. And uh, you have to kind of have, you know, enough conviction uh, to hold until they can get to these points where they start generating enough revenue uh, to, you know, give investors enough confidence to accumulate the stock and, uh, and and get there. Guys, on a stock like this, I I don't own this. I don't plan on owning it right now. Uh, just for the mere fact of I would rather let them get there just like on ride. Uh, I will say this though, I will trade the chart in a short term manner. I do think that this company could absolutely, uh, you know, revolutionize the industry and I can get behind that. I am willing to take some risks on companies that are going to change, uh, you know, the way that we fundamentally produce, uh, you know, something that is planning to take over the way we travel. So uh, with that being said, we'll just kind of have to watch it. Uh, kind of see where it goes. There is a lot going for this company, but there is a ton of risks. Uh, like I said, competition, manufacturing, all of these different things. The other thing I wanted to mention about competition, guys, uh, Toyota is like the, the number one leading automotive company in the world. Uh, they, they are kind of partner, you know, Japan has got this, uh, it's called the new energy industrial, uh, tech development organization. 
they're providing funding for Japanese automakers, uh, battery manufacturers in Japan to develop this technology uh, because it can really, again, help them tremendously lead the charge and get out in front of it. So their, their QuantumScape is, is not just facing big companies. They're literally facing the best and smartest minds in Japan uh, you know, to, to get there first. Guys, Japan is a country. It's not a company. So they're facing not only massive companies as competition, but they're facing the entire country of Japan, uh, you know, uh, to get there faster as well. So, you know, a lot of competition there. Um, okay, let's take a look at the chart, guys. So as you can see here, uh, you know, this thing just ran up in, you know, early November, December, January from literally $10 at its SPAC price to $133 at its high. That is absolutely insane. We've seen stocks run like crazy, but that is insane. And then look at all this red, guys. You know, uh, even early December, like this is before, uh, you know, a lot of the other SPACs started getting destroyed. I mean, if you think about it, January, February, uh, you know, was, was not bad for a lot of the SPACs we talk about. They didn't really start selling off until the end of February, early March, uh, and then everything started getting killed. They started gapping down in, you know, December before even January even came. Uh, then January came and they were way back down to, you know, the the third, the $40, $50 range. Uh, then they kind of traded sideways for a while in this range, got rejected around this area twice, boom, double top, uh, and then just got shoved down past its mid-March lows and hasn't really seen much, you know, love since then. Uh, in the last few weeks, though, ever since, you know, May 25th, you have gotten this momentum shifting structure. Uh, again, guys, you did have that retrace from the high all the way back down 88.6% uh, to a critical inflection point from when the stock originally gapped up uh, after its, uh, you know, nav price towards, you know, back in August. So uh, it did find support here. Uh, you are making your higher high and your higher low. Uh, so you, you know, you recapture this area, but you really need to recapture this area, uh, you know, in order to start getting up to those meaningful levels. Uh, this is a point right here, guys, where you can see big inflection point right here. Anytime you get around this point, you get big movements. If it can hold this area, you get big pops. So, uh, you know, you come down, you hold support, you make a higher high than the previous high, you make a higher low than the previous low. Unfortunately, you are under all of the major moving averages uh, but if you notice here uh, you are starting to get positive momentum building you are cur currently getting the rsi building uh, you are in uh, you know that middle area where you're starting to get up into the uh, the bullish you know sediment uh, so you do have a lot of opportunity here guys in my opinion if you're going to buy a stock like this these are the areas to buy it at uh, you know, you don't want to buy it up here when it's running to all-time highs. You want to buy it way down here in these deep value perceived areas uh, where it significantly cuts down your risk. So if you're going to buy this stock, this is where you want to buy it. Uh, you know, you get your first bottom, you get your second bottom. Uh, you know, depending on, you know, what happens in the next couple of days, I would probably wait until you get like a, a another higher high uh, and then it comes back to back test. So say you come up here, uh, you get a higher high and then you come down to, you know, back test an area to make that next higher low. That's probably what I would do. Uh, you know, you are getting some lower, uh, you know, sets of volume, uh, but overall, this is the area to buy it. It does look good down here. I do see a lot of potential here. My price prediction uh, for the end of 2021 would be up here around the $52 mark. Uh, and this is strictly based off of chart patterns uh, because there's just not enough fundamental data to give like a meaningful price to sales ratio or PE rate, anything because they're not generating any revenue. So, but uh, with that being said, I do see them coming up here and breaking this $40 range. If they break that $40 range, they're going to 52 really quickly. After that, uh, your next meaningful area is 65, 71, uh, and then clear up here, uh, you know, at the 87 range. So there is a massive amount of upsides in this stock, guys. And at this level, you don't have that much downside. In this level here, you have more upside than you do downside, in my personal opinion. Now, you could stay range bound between $40 and uh, you know $25 for months and months and months and months and months uh however if you do break 40 i think you're going to start retesting those higher levels so as of right now guys again i do not own it 
Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, I am not a licensed stockbroker. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Always do your own research and due diligence. Uh, you know, don't just take my word for it. I think the company is amazing. I think they've got a lot of opportunity. Just a little too speculative for me, for me right now to jump in and hold it for the long term. I would rather let them get a little bit further, trade the short term volatility of the stock, uh, and then, uh, you know, focus on other stocks that I have higher conviction in. So, uh, come over and join us at the Patreon if you want to, uh, you know, talk stocks with us, if you want to, you know, see our trade setups and things like that. Like the video if you get any value out of it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.